cattle raiding is a cultural practice and a form of organized crime, today especially common among herders in South Sudan and in northwestern Kenya. The practice is a long-standing feature of many East African pastoralist societies. However, the ready availability of arms and the incorporation of this practice into the larger political conflict in South Sudan have intensified the violence to unprecedentedly deadly levels. Raiders, who once mounted attacks with spears, are now armed with AK-47s, available for as little as the price of two cows. Cattle raids and revenge attacks have killed thousands of people in South Sudan, and hundreds of thousands of cattle were stolen since the country gained its independence in 2011. The act of cattle raiding is quite ancient, first attested over 7000 years ago in Europe. Cattle raiding myths are known among all people who keep cattle. The theme can be seen in such tales as Indra and the Panis, the driving off of the cows of Kuli, the Homeric hymn to Hermes, who steals the cattle of Apollo, the biblical raids of David while living among the Philistines, Odysseus' man and Ilios' cattle, and others. The great number and wide distribution of these stories show that there are highly popular themes among cattle herders. For centuries, cattle raiding among pastoralists in East Africa was a generally accepted pagan ritual to acquire livestock, to replenish decimated herds after periods of drought. Cattle raiding, as an institution of mutual exchange among communities, was governed by regulations, established by elders and clan leaders. Warriors sought the blessings of elders and seers in order to successfully raid neighboring communities. The practice changed drastically when communities started to acquire illegal firearms. The use of automatic weapons such as AK-47s and M16s saw the cultural practice of cattle raiding evolving into cattle rustling, a violent organized criminal enterprise aimed at stealing livestock from the lands of rival tribes for commercial gain and for prestige. In South Sudan, bullets for the AK-47 rifle are sold for as little as one US dollar each during the high season. The estimated total number of guns legally held in the country is 720,000, while those illegally held are 3 million. The Ankole Watusi, a horned breed known as the Kettle of Kings, grow up to 8 feet tall and are worth as much as $500 each. The Mundari tribe view these animals as their most valuable assets and guard them with machine guns. Their cattle are a form of currency and status symbol and form a key part of the family's pension or dowry. The concept of livestock as wealth originated around 10,000 BC in the Near East. The story of how cattle herds became assets begins with mankind's first farmers in the Levant. For tens of thousands of years, people all over the planet obtained most of their food from hunting migratory herds of large animals, such as wild cattle, antelope, bison and mammoths. Beginning about 14,000 years ago, people in some regions began to depend less on big game hunting and more on relatively stationary food resources, such as fish, shellfish, small game and wild plants. Archaeologists trace the emergence of food producing societies in the Levant, around 12,000 BC. First, Natufian hunter-gatherers began to settle in one place, then to farm crops and animals. The agricultural revolution was the wide-scale transition of many human cultures during the Neolithic period, from a lifestyle of hunting and gathering to one of agriculture and settlement, making an increasingly large population possible. The success of Natufian farming communities under the favorable climatic conditions of the early Holocene enabled them to expand into neighboring regions of the Fertile Crescent and also along the Levantine corridor into Anatolia. Villages appeared, followed by towns and eventually cities. The first temples were erected and the first elites in history emerged. As humans began to experiment with farming, they also started domesticating animals. The practice of herding, caring for roaming groups of livestock over a large area, developed about 10,000 BC. Around the same time, touring cattle were domesticated from as few as 80 wild odoks in central Anatolia, the Levant and western Iran. Domesticated animals when used as labor, helped make more intensive farming possible and also provided additional nutrition via milk and meat. Neolithic cattle herders developed a variety of innovative husbandry practices in order to achieve desirable traits among livestock, which were advantageous to humans. 
Since that time, owning livestock, especially owning cattle, has been synonymous with wealth and power. While agriculture spread in the Near East, small bands of semi-nomadic hunter-gatherers were the only human beings roaming Europe's lush, green forests. Roughly 9000 years ago, groups of farmers from Anatolia headed towards Europe, seeking new land to cultivate. Cattle were of great importance for these early farmers, in particular as farming expanded towards the well-watered regions of northeastern Bulgaria, one of the earliest known Neolithic settlements in Europe. By 4000 BC, however, agriculture dominated the continent and hierarchical societies had evolved. These Neolithic farmers from Anatolia are among the ancestors of all modern Europeans. The spread of agriculture across Europe, from Greece to Scandinavia, took about 2500 years. Analysis of radiocarbon dates show clearly that hunter-gatherers and early farming populations lived side by side for as much as a millennium in many parts of Europe. While the first farming communities were apparently still organized in flat hierarchies, the sedentary way of life favored the accumulation of individual and communal property, which had to be protected and administered. Since the beginning of mankind, there has always been hierarchy based on ability and on martial prowess, but in the Neolithic period, hierarchy that was also based on wealth and animals emerged. With the relatively low population densities of this period, it is unlikely that wealth and land would have been of much importance. Wealth and animals, alongside durable goods and transportation infrastructure, enabled the emergence of genuine opportunities for ambition through risk-taking. Regular surpluses of resources and food enabled a much greater degree of role differentiation within farming societies, creating space for less immediately productive roles. Initially these would have been agriculture related, toolmakers, builders and butchers, but over time new roles emerged. The priest cast to pray for good rains and to conduct pagan rituals, the military to protect villages from rivals and wild animals, and the political class to transform economic power into social capital. Around 4000 BC, animal traction for pulling wagons and plows came into widespread use in Central Europe. The emergence of animal traction had a number of effects, including breaking through household labor bottlenecks and allowing heavier soils to be cultivated. But its main impact on the creation of wealth was to transform the economic value of cattle from just meat and hide producers into power. Cattle held great symbolic importance in those societies where they served as wealth and played key roles in rituals and myths. It has been suggested that cattle skulls placed on top of mounds may have been seen as supernatural protectors of the site and clan symbols. Furthermore, it can be argued that the form of long mounds themselves may be a symbolic reference to cattle, both in profile and through the arrangement of horn-shaped forecourts present at a large number of sites. To steer cattle of neighboring tribes is one of the oldest known aspects of early European farmer culture. The act of cattle raiding is first attested over 7000 years ago in today's village of Thalheim, near Stuttgart. It is very likely that cattle were used as bridewolf in Neolithic Europe. Bridewolf is associated with mixed agricultural herding economies in situations where land is plentiful and labor is the limiting factor in production. Bridewolf would then be crucial in securing rights to the labor of women and their children. Since bridewife and cattle is strongly associated with patrilineal and patriarchy, one could see an intensification of bridewife running from southeast to northwest, as reflected in the female-centered symbolism of Neolithic Southeast Europe, as opposed to the male-centered symbolism of the later Neolithic of Northwest Europe, often considered to have a more strongly pastoral economy than the rest of Europe. The Funnelbeaker culture was mostly of early European farmer ancestry. However, among funnel beakers in Scandinavia, hunter-gatherer ancestry was estimated to be at about 50%, while in Central Europe it was at about 40%, with the remaining being early European farmer. During the 4th and 3rd millennia BC, several key technological, logistical and other factors converged over much of Europe and created a dynamic cultural environment in which groups of cattle breeders began to bury high-ranking individuals in graves that documented the wealth of the deceased. <laughs> This special and rare type of burial gave the leader of a clan a higher place in the afterlife than the place intended for the common people. Central Europe was a vast crucible in which people moved about, traded, intermarried and fought. In other words, it provided fertile conditions for the creation of wealth and the rise of pastoralist warrior elites. The linkage of all of Europe by a network of trails, water crossings, passes and portages linked hamlets in a web of information and commerce. During the second half of the Neolithic, people became more comfortable with risk and were able to assess opportunities for personal and household gain.
Certain individuals and households were more comfortable with risk than others. The globular amphora culture that flourished in an area between Ukraine and today's Germany was non-Indo-European speaking, but with cultural influences from the Yamnaya culture. In the 20th century, archaeologists assumed an Indo-European origin, but the burial customs, the extremely few copper finds, and new genetic studies speak against this. According to admixture analysis, the people of the culture had approximately 70% early European farmer ancestry and 30% western hunter-gatherer ancestry, some of them with negligible eastern hunter-gatherer and Yamnaya traces. The culture is primarily known from its burials and its typical clay vessels, with a spherical body and a cylindrical, usually decorated neck. There are 20 subgroups described. Thanks to the new mobility, all groups were in commercial contact with each other with carts, which were now also pulled by horses due to the influences from the Yamnaya people. The trading network existed since the Funnel Beaker culture and was expanded again by the people of the Corded Ware culture. Their relationship with cattle was clearly of great importance and their remains in many cases achieved a prominence in depositional practice, either through their placement in a visible location within the site or the volume in which they were incorporated in deposits, not seen with any other species. In 2003, archaeologists have uncovered a sensational tomb dating from 3000 BC in Westerhausen, near Quedlinburg. A subgroup of the globular amphora culture settled there at the time, a clan of cattle breeders. It is assumed that this group migrated into the region from today's Poland, around 3000 BC. The remarkable find indicates the wealth of a powerful man who was the leader of a warlike group of herdsmen. The 40-year-old man was buried in a stone-built, coffin-like box. The construction of the stone chamber testifies to the high status of the deceased. It was the work of many hands. The positioning of the 600 kg capstone alone was an enormous effort. Because of the pits found in the immediate vicinity with a total of 7 cattle, it is believed that a high-ranking cattle warlord was buried here 5000 years ago. The sacrifice of cattle was unusual at this time, and only a few graves from this period show such a rich expression. The six bulls and one cow were killed during the funeral ceremony and buried as separate grave goods for the afterlife. The cattle were in their prime. Their killing was a noticeable loss for the community and speak of the high standing of the buried man. The man in the stone box was placed in a squatting position with his head facing to the east. In addition to the skeletal remains, several sacrificial offerings were also discovered. Stone axes, ceramic vessels, flint tools, snail jewelry, a hammer made of deer antlers and the head of a wild boar. Around the time of the chieftain of Westerhausen, the practice of occasional cattle raiding developed into a profession in Europe and in the Middle East. It is at this time, in the late Neolithic, that the history of organized warfare for resources begins. More than 5000 years ago, groups of nomadic animal herders traveled out of the Pontic Caspian steppe in southeast Europe for thousands of miles. The final stages of the late Neolithic in Europe are characterized by the invasion of these steppe herders and the widespread corded ware culture. Copper and eventually bronze metallurgy led to the production of durable goods which were both functional, valued and recyclable. Within this social and economic crucible, ambition flourished. Individuals and their households could now have genuine wealth at their disposal, in contrast to the income derived from crops, meat and barter for consumable materials such as flint. While the populations of Europe had known about milk as a food source for thousands of years, it was only with the arrival of the steppe herders that milk became a main source of food in Europe. A massive shift to milk consumption took place. 90% of pre-Bronze Age individuals were not drinking milk. However, by the early Bronze Age, 94% of the people living and moving across Eurasia were milk drinkers. It is assumed that the vast expansion of Yamnaya and Yamnaya-related groups coincided with the incorporation of milk into the diet. Cows, sheep and goats provided pastoralists with most of their milk, but researchers found evidence that people such as the corded ware people were drinking horse milk too. Milk benefited people, as it meant animals gave them a moving source of high quality fluid, proteins and vitamins, and they didn't have to kill the precious animals to get it. What we see here is a form of cultural revolution. Early Bronze Age herders clearly realized that dairy consumption offered some fundamental benefits. First, local cattle warlords united several clans into tribes and formed organized armies. Then, the first kingdoms arose. In the Middle East, the first cities with thousands of inhabitants emerged. Cattle herders had become military fighting units. 
the occasional stealing from the neighboring tribe became organized warfare for resources, influence and prestige. It is believed that one of the oldest known organized battles took place in Mesopotamia, in the northeast of Syria. Excavation work has shown that the city of Hamuka was destroyed around 3500 BC. Slings and thousands of clay bullets have been found, evidence of the siege that the city endured. The example of Mesopotamia shows that it was important for rulers to point out that a large number of cows were in their possession. The chosen symbolism served as an expression of legitimacy and also had religious reasons. 